Okay, hello everyone. My name is Kelly Couch. Welcome to today's experience and enroll call. I told Nick he can't be in the camera yet. He's not the host, so we're scooching him on out. Um, but today is going to be Nick and I talking about experience equals engagement. Like how do you get the experience you engage people and how and why you need to do this. So before we start with that, who brought their reboot kit? Today is the last day. Raise your hand if you guys got your reboot kit. Raise your hand if you guys grabbed extra reboot kits. I will tell you from personal experience and in our team, people sell more reboot kits between the day it sells out or the day, the last day it's on sale and the time the reboot actually happens, right? I, we sell more, we sell less in these four days it's on the site and more because you're a lot of your reboot customers. Now, if it's people that are doing the reboot every month, obviously they wanna go online and get theirs, but if you're trying to get new people to come, a lot of people we found have trouble making that commitment it, two weeks ahead of time. They're, they're last minute. People like me are last minute, they're like, all right, I need this. Like they, whatever, for whatever reason, are not feeling good the couple of days leading into it. And that's where you having those extra to give them will get them engaged this month and going forward next month. So grab a couple extra, encourage your teams to grab a couple extra and then help get them out into your community. Um, so next we're gonna go into gratitude. So get out your phones, text someone and mean it. Like text someone and mean it and why you appreciate them. Like. I used to do this on these calls and I would like, hey, Nick, thankful for you, you know? And it didn't really like, I was doing it to do it, but like do it to mean it and see like what you get back. I've been sending them like to my kids' teachers or different, well, my younger ones, teachers. I'm the older one, teachers. But <laughs> to yourself, no, but text it and mean it and see what you get back. Like people love to feel, our light is blinking. You think we have an ex-electrician in the house. Um, but text it and mean it and see what you guys get back. And like, they really, people love to feel appreciated. So I'll give you a minute to do that. And then we will move into recognition. Got my extra. Good job, Jamie Messina. <laughs> and Kelsey, everybody's getting extra. See, when you know, you know. All right, so let's move into recognition in the chat. What I wanna to recognize today, I loved yesterday that you guys were recognize yourself. I think that's amazing. And I think we need to do that more. Today, what I want you to do is people, we're getting to the end of this 90 day run. And what I would love you guys to do is recognize people in the chat who you know have been doing these call to actions and it's starting to make a difference. Like you're seeing them, it's making a difference, not even in the results they're getting just yet, but in themselves, like they're taking the action and it's starting to get themselves more engaged. Patrice Mary with a brand new baby at home, girl. All the credit. <laughs> uh, Jesse Anderson, Chantal from Tamon, Megan Creveston, whoa, Emily Marie, Steph Potts, Sarah Shora, Bianca, Amanda Frary, Sharon Granlin, Emily, you guys, these are pouring, Kayla Kelly, Anna and Nate Justice, Shelby Frame, Melissa May, Mandy Crawford, I think I missed a couple in there. How come it's not oh. <laughs> Emily Santiago, Mick Carrier. Marilee, Emily, Samantha, Amy, Sam Shear, Emily Lamarge, oh, killing it. Strong women, I love this. Sarah Wilgenbush, I kill that name. Stephanie Jean, who's lost her mom today. Everybody send a little love to her. I know that's hard. Pam Mateer, Monica Cummings. All right, Amanda Dominguez, good job, you guys. That's amazing. And, and if you guys are doing those call to actions, those are the people that in 90, 120, couple months, you're gonna be like, guys they're so lucky right like everyone's gonna be like why is they getting all these people you know why they took the action now during this 90-day run awesome so go on the prove it page like share comment um and tonight i will give you the page at the end but tonight we're gonna have an awesome champ success profile interview with kelsey giggy so get excited for that those of you guys that heard her story at the event or a part of her story at the event we're gonna dig in tonight and go further with that. She has a lot to share and a lot we can learn from her. So without further ado, I'll take my host hat off and put my training hat on. I'll introduce my husband, Nick Couch. And we're What's up, everybody? Get going. Who is absolutely fired up? Who's drank some keto up? Who slammed some unleashed? Who's ready to bring the heat? Let's do it. Man, nobody, nobody's drinking ketones. Let's see, like, hold your keto up if you're drinking it. Yeah. 
We had a girl on our team yesterday before her workout, she slammed an unleash and slammed a keto up and then did her workout. It was like, that was the best workout of my life. <laughs> so the topic today, we're going to wrap it back up for you guys. Last week, if you were on Nick's training about attract in person and my training on enrolling or, uh, excuse me, connecting in person. Now we want to bring that back around and wrap it up and talk about in person engaging and enrolling. If you haven't taken this from every single training everyone's done, please write this down. Every interaction is planting a seed and giving exposure to this conversation. Like every single interaction you're having, every time you talk to someone, even if it's not about keto, you're planting a seed because you're, you're building trust in you. That it's super important to remember long-term. And while we're talking about planting the seed, like think about it, like the farm, we, I had this talk with a lot of people this week. The farmer doesn't go out and expect to just have a field full of corn if he didn't plant the seeds in the spring. Like you're never going to go out and just reap a harvest. You have to plant the seeds. It doesn't just happen overnight. Like you, like everybody sees these overnight successes, like, oh, so-and-so joined Proven, they went rank six in two weeks. They've been planting seeds for five years. It's, 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 a, it's a process. So the work, that's, I love how you were saying the work that you're doing today will show up in 90 days. You're sowing, then you're reaping. So you will get those occasional people that they have one sip of keto up and they sign up for an experience pack. It will happen. But for most people, you're going to have to plant the seed and then you're going to reap the harvest. And we talked last week about engage, uh, attraction and connecting. And we talked about how that can feel a little bit weird, especially if you're not used to doing that, right? We talked about like people that get really sweaty talking to another person about this, right? But this engagement piece, this experience that you're giving them, this third piece is what makes the, maybe like you were weird in the attraction or you were a little bit weird in the connection. This engagement piece is what brings it back around and lets you start to move into action. And that's what makes it not weird. Like when, when you're there, you've talked to them a little bit, that might be a little weird. You've connected them with some tools. This experience, bring them into your community, bring them into what you're doing, helping them be positive, take inspired action. That is what's going to make it not weird. People want that positivity and it's just taking the next logical step. It's when you leave the steps off, like you just talk to them in a coffee shop and never call them again. And then a sale pops up four months later and you send them the promo. That's weird, right? But if you're taking these next logical steps in between and you're engaging them and now you're now their friend, when that sale pops up, you're like, Girlfriend, we've been friends for how long and you keep talking about how tired you are because now I know her. I know that she wakes up to breastfeed every two hours in the night and I'm like, sister, let me help you, right? So that it's the next logical step in this whole process. For example, like if I, I always like to give mom groups because there's so many of them online and you, if you've been a part of any of them, like you get this, but like join a group, say you join a group because you're a stay-at-home mom and it's a stay-at-home mom's group. Cool, we talked about that, right? You connect with a few other moms because you want to know what they're about and what they do. Great. That's the connect piece, right? What's the next logical step? You go engage in their activities and you get to know them and the things they're doing. It works in normal life and it works here too, right? I think, and I think like we keep saying, it's important to remember these three things rarely happen in the same day, even in the same week, sometimes not even the same month. Like it all comes back around, right? You're, you're constantly, if you can keep it all in the cycle, like then you're not attracting someone one day, but you didn't attract, you're not constantly attracting, for example. And then you're like, why is that one person not getting back to me? You can, you can get so focused on that person. Weird, right? So you're constantly bringing them in, constantly rolling them. They're always in all these different stages. They come back to you. Like, you know, I just had someone yesterday that reached out. Girl, I finally watched that, that campfire video you sent me two months ago. Can I really try this for five days? Sure. Yeah, of course you can. You know, but had I like just, if she was my only person, I would have nagged her for the next five days and she wouldn't want to be my friend ever again. But we've talked about homeschooling and everything else since then. And now she's like, finally watch the video. It's just, what's the next logical step? And it's, it's just, it's the constant move. So like, I'll give you an example where it did happen in the same weekend. We were in Dallas. This is back when we had the old lab, the smaller lab where they made ketones. We were going from the hotel where we were having an event to the lab. Our Uber driver couldn't help but hear us talk about ketones. We were drinking them. We're going to the plant, the, the place where they make them. So he literally, we engaged him into the next step. He was excited listening to all the talk about keto. 
we invited him into the lab tour. So he literally turned his Uber switch off. He went on the lab tour with us. We found somebody had an extra ticket. So now, could you imagine going from learning about ketones to being in the building where they make them, surrounded with 120 promoters? So then we left there and he drove us back to the hotel. So his, his like hair's on fire. He's been drinking ketones, taste testing them. And then literally, I just kept checking in with him because he lives in Dallas throughout the weekend. He came over to the hotel Sunday morning and signed up with an experience pack as a promoter. The next trip to Dallas to keep the ball moving, I went and I, instead of getting a room at the hotel for the event, I stayed at their apartment. So I got to know him and his fiance very well because like we would come back after the event and I would crash on their couch and then we'd wake up and eat breakfast together. So like these, like it's okay to be weird and like, hey man, can I crash on your couch? Like it's just, it's part of like, I'm a really, really in-person person. Like I'm just, I'm fierce and relentless. You don't have relentless. to stay on someone's couch. You don't have to. But, to sell them. No, I'm just them. saying like, there's a lot of different <laughs> ways to do it. And sometimes it does happen in the same weekend. Like you do move them from their learning about ketones to an experience pack to promoting, but it's just constantly taking the next step and moving them forward. I feel like threw you for a curveball on that one. Because now everyone feels like they have to go sleep on someone's couch to sell them a five day. Like that derailed so fast. <laughs> Like, so fast. It was an okay. example. <laughs> so back to not doing it all on the same day. Like, Uber to the couch to the five day. That's okay. You write that down, then you'd be successful. <laughs> so, but I think when it comes back around, you need to engage them in the next step and get them moving. Get them mobilized and taking action in their network, right? So we all take action. But when you, like, if you were um, on Brian's call about the ultimate prover experience, like, you always want to be thinking about the next interaction. Like what, like, so someone takes a five day and they're having a great experience. Like you wouldn't, like he said, you wouldn't sell them a franchise the first day they come into the gym. You wouldn't, right? So you, you don't wanna need to do that here, but there's steps in between that you can get them ready. Like get them to start sharing, like they're five days in, you're having a keto life party. You're like, hey, can you come share your story at my keto life party? Um, I want someone that's brand new that just started trying it. That's amazing because the people that are there are now hearing a new story. They know Nick and I have been drinking it forever and, and we love it. They know that. But if this new person that's 10 days in comes and shares their story, that's great. But what did it get that new person doing? Sharing their story. And we learned yesterday from Anna, power in the story. So if they can learn to start sharing that and finding their own superpower in that, you, you're taking them to the next step, earning free product. Earn, and you're showing them how to do this along the way, right? Action is the key, right? Continual engagement until, through, and after enrollment. You have to constantly be engaging with those people. So I feel like you always hear people, I always joke with Nick because he's really, really good at getting people excited. But sometimes he makes these big sweeping, like, go make a big mess and I'll clean it up. To someone like me, like, what's that even mean? Like, I don't, you're gonna need to break that down a little bit further, right? But I think, Making a big mess means attracting everyone you can. Get out there in all the different ways and plant 20 million seeds. And cleaning it up means engaging and enrolling them. Who wants to do this with you? And who do you want to work with? You have to start putting them in those categories, just like Abigail taught us way back at the beginning, putting them in categories and finding the information they need. Same thing here. Put them in the categories. Like, are they earning free product? Are they at the point of sharing their story? Are they at the point of... You know, maybe they're ready to have a keto life party. Like where, always be putting them in your mind and then show them how to do it, right? So what does that look like in the ultimate prover experience? Like where are they? Are they five and a 10 day? Are they ready to be a promoter? And are they yellow, green, or red lights? Like we talked about that before. So you always want to be engaging them into the next step. How do you do this? So um, with that yellow, green, and red light, like we always talk about that, who's, a red light is they're done, they've said no, they've said no a couple times, you went for no again, they keep saying no, and you're like, I am gonna convince them. Don't spend the time there. Chasing the excitement means getting them, chasing the people that wanna be with you, that wanna do this with you, and that's how you're engaging. Like if you're constantly trying to engage people who are red lights, you're gonna get so frustrated and feel like you're spinning your wheels. If you're engaging people who are green lights, you, that's what they want. They want the time with you. Even if you don't see that, you have value to give and they want it. So if they're there and they're showing up, you need to be ready to move them into that next step. And you can sit down and have an open conversation. What is, where do you see yourself? What's the next step for you? That kind of thing. 
Always assessing their needs. That's how you do it. Always assess their needs and always have an outcome set. I think that's something um, that's maybe a little bit different online than in person. Um, Cause when you're in person, it's easy to get distracted. So I can sit down. These people are now becoming our friends, right? We talked about that. So it's easy to have a boiler room or have someone sit down and an hour and a half later, you haven't done anything. You're just, how's your kid? How's your dog? You know, you can get there and then you're like, why did they even drive down? You're like, we need to go, 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 go. Get into action, set the outcome, stay focused and keep reminding yourself. The, the big thing, like I'll, I'll give you a little bit of story on the, why we talk about chase the excitement. So when I, Kelly and I were at our first event, May of 2016, and when we left the hotel, literally as we were walking out the door, Brian's like, hey guys, just go chase the excitement. And we left. Like, I didn't even know what the heck that meant. But when we went home, and this is when we had one flavor of ketones, no reboot kits, no keto cream, like it was just orange ketones. So literally all we did was we got people five day experiences and then whoever was the most excited, we went and worked with them. And then whenever they shared it, whoever was the most excited, we went and worked with them. And then we just kept bouncing to whoever was the most excited. I was spending time in person with the most excited person. I was going out and I was delivering 10 days with the most excited person. We were having keto life parties before they were keto life parties with the most excited person with the coolest story. If you're chasing people that aren't excited about ketones, you're like a dog chasing a car. You're never going to catch it. You have to surround yourself with the people that have their hair on fire about ketones. The people that want to tell the world about ketones. I forget who referenced it, but they called it the megaphone. You want the person that's holding the megaphone. You want to chase them down. And that's all you should be doing. You should have a list of excited people and you literally spend 110% of your time with you with the most excited person. And if they lose excitement, like, I don't know, maybe they got an upset stomach, whatever. I don't know. If they lose excitement for ketones, go to the next excited person. You should literally have a funnel full of excited people that you can keep spinning through the funnel till they shoot out the other side and teach them to focus on the excited people. It's all about the excitement. And if you're constantly engaging with those people, that's how you're going to move the next excited by to the customer experience, to the promoter experience. It's a constant move. If they lose excitement and you're trying to pull them through the mud, you're never going to get them. It needs to be organic. Just stay with the excited people. It will make a huge shift in your results. And I think it's important to make a distinction here. Like Nick and I, and we learned this the hard way, so learn from our mistakes. But, you know, we, when we hear things and then we run with it. Like to a fault, we go. And so in the beginning, we were going person to person to per like find the person in the room, like very literal, like go to a, go. they were mixers, right? I can say that out here now. But they would go to a mixer, find the most excited person there, go to their house did that go to the next person go go we were always staying with the most excited person but you know how we've all been talking about simplicity that's why these keto life parties are super great because nick and i in that process started to learn and talk and talk and we spent so much time with our excited people but then we started doing it all for them right and so i think it, when you go to lcd you make that distinction between um situational coaching versus coaching the person and so when someone very early on people would have been capable of doing these mixers right and so when we were spending time with those people we should have been spending time with those people on situations that they didn't know how to do versus keep them running those mixers for them because what happens brian gave us a great example like hayden knows how to tie her shoes now of course and so he said once you teach her how to tie her shoes if you try to do it for her what she do she swatch you away i can do it mom we didn't let them go, right? So constantly having tons of people in all these different spaces, it let you it lets you step back and sort of assess like what do they need? What situation haven't they been through that I can step in and show them? Like I do, you watch, we do it together, you do, I watch. Like you should constantly be finding these situations so that you build this army of people that know how to do what you do and aren't the expert, but they know how to bring people through the steps, right? So I think that's super important to make that distinction. You're not going around and doing everything for everyone. You're going around and teaching everyone to do and move and duplicate. And while we're on that, like I was literally on the phone last night, Eastern time with Brian James at midnight. We were talking about this. Like we need to raise the standard. Like if you have somebody that's excited 
hey, I need you to introduce me to three to five to 10 people today. But like, who do you know that needs ketones? Like get them engaged in making phone calls, getting you on the phone, getting you on video chats, getting you on a Zoom, getting you in person, personal meetups at a coffee shop. Hey, who are three of your friends? Like I have ketones, I have a car, I got gas. Let's go drop off ketones at your friend's house. You need to get those people that are excited, engaged and taking action. So if you have somebody that has three to five people and then you have a keto life party and there's three to five people there, those three to five people should be introducing you to three to five people. Let's do some math. I'm not going to literally do the math. And then if those people have three to five people and then they introduce you to three, like it needs to be a constant introduction. You have, I have conviction. I hope you guys have the level of conviction that Nick Couch has. Like the difference is if you set me down with somebody that doesn't believe in ketones, the keto diet, it's a fad, it's whatever. And you sit them down with me, I can guarantee you one thing. They're, they're going to leave either excited about ketones or they just gave up. They're, I'm not going to leave not believing in ketones. Like, they're not going to shift my conviction. You can't do it. I have so much belief in ketones because over three and a half years and thousands of success stories, <clears throat> like, it's just, you have to get them with somebody else that maybe has more conviction. If you're brand new today, you need to be bringing your promoter, your circle champion, your pro champ in because they have a higher level of conviction. Whenever you're engaging that process, if you don't have the belief, the conviction that Nick Couch has or somebody else that you're working has, you need to third party them in because I guarantee you that one, like there's no way you can, my belief is not wavering. Like I know what this product can do. I know what this company can do, et cetera, et cetera. And if you don't have the conviction yourself, there's ways to build that, right? You are who you surround yourself with. You guys have heard that. Like there's never a time when I leave Brian James that I don't feel like, whoa, like he just raised my awareness every single time. Like we leave, we fly, like we went for dinner when we were out in Vegas, we went down to see Brian and I left like, why do I always leave? Like, like if I was around him all the time, do you not think that would shift things, right? Like you would, you would shift. I love how Jamie was saying, I don't know how anyone loses excitement. That made me laugh really hard. Like I get it, that I'm there too, but it does happen, right? Um, so I think we wanted to find engagement for you guys a little bit like we don't want you to leave here being like they just told me to believe more like we want to know what are the steps to get to do this so what you need to look for things you need to look for are what information or insight like i said a lot of people don't need information they need insight what are they doing with that information or env environment excuse me do they need to build do they need to build their belief and make them comfortable moving to the next step right so you don't want to be forcing people through the step, right? We get this, this distinction. We don't want to force them into the next step. We want to know when they're ready and then give them the insight they need to, or the environment that they need to build their belief and make them comfortable stepping right into that. Would they not be more comfortable stepping into sharing this if you've already given them the environment to share their story? You see how that works. Like, I'm not saying you're ready, you're ready, you're ready, ready, ready. Like, you're doing really good. You're doing really good. You should probably share this with your friends. How about now? How about ready? now? Ready how about now? Can you just go drive there right now? Like, that, I quit. Like, I quit. That would be me. Like, that's why I drank this by myself and didn't tell Nick in the beginning because I wasn't ready for him to be like, this is cool. You're ready, 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 ready. You have to, like, make them comfortable. Like, know who they are, right? And I think the key, what's the key, right? You're like, how do I do this? Action. Action is the key. Engage your person into action that they need to take to get them through the momentum cycle. You've heard Brian talk about the momentum cycle, potential action results belief. The action is where they get the, res like you know the action that they need to take. Helping them do that helps them get the results, helps build their belief, and then you start over with a bigger goal and you keep going around, right? So I think people totally underestimate action, totally underestimate and getting other people into action, mobilize them. They can mess up. You're there to provide the safety net. When they fail, it's cool. I failed too. I failed a lot. If you guys had a video of our whole first year, we failed a lot and it was okay. You know, and I think you need to create that safe environment for people to take action and move forward. You, what's the next thing? You need to fill in the gaps. You know where the gaps are. They don't. People who are just getting started, who are looking into this opportunity, they'll fill it in if you don't do it for them. They're like, oh, I know I was with this other company and they want me to do this and this and this. If you make them feel comfortable, you show them how we're different, you show them how to do C1 coaching, show them how to do it, and you find what they need. They don't know what they need. They haven't done this before. And I love how Nick was talking about conviction, but I think if you try to transfer all your conviction onto someone, day one, 
what happens? They shut down, right? If they're normal. If they're not sleeping on their Uber driver's couches, then they're going to shut down. If they're Nick, then double hand experience back. So it depends on how you want to run your business. But I think if you transfer your conviction in baby steps, that's, that's a great thing to do. You can transfer your conviction in all these different situations as you're teaching them. What are they going to do? They're going to do the same thing. People do what you do. So I think teaching them what to do and transferring that, that helps. And so we want to end with like, what are things engagement does? Engagement keeps people. Engagement helps them to start to engage and enroll others. Engagement is the glue and engagement builds stability. Who doesn't want all of that? I do. <laughs> it's true. If you get a new, it's, it's the same thing with the go challenge. Why is all of our focus on the first 30 days, 30 days of double direct, 30 days of go challenge. Cause if you engage and mobilize and you engage somebody to take action and you're, you're helping them, maybe their beliefs not quite there, but you're spending time with them, whether it's in person or online, you're constantly checking in, you're holding their belief up with a prop because they don't quite have it yet. And then, and then eventually their belief will be there where you can take that prop out and they can run. But if you get somebody moving and engaged and mobilized and getting samples out and having keto life parties in the first 30 days, imagine if every promoter that's ever joined your team went GoPro, Go MVP. First 30 days. If they made the $750 GoPro, Go MVP bonus, plus whatever commission they earn by achieving the four customer minimum and et cetera, like imagine the the belief they have going into month two, holy smokes, look at, my, look at my account load. And then the next month they take more action and they transfer that to the next month and the next month, your business will be out of control. But if you're not putting that prop under their belief until they see it that first month paycheck or whatever it takes for them to see it, or they start having people that got five and 10 days and have great results, or they have customers that are getting great results, you can then remove the prop and their belief will just keep going. You have to be that support system in the beginning or they're gonna fall over. So don't be afraid to transfer your conviction. Maybe I'm a little intense for some people, but you have to keep that going to stabilize their business to the, where they have a consistent income coming in to where they're like, oh, this thing really, really works. Prove it's different. And then you get them to a a keto academy and more where you can show them the bigger picture and then it just keeps raising it and you don't have to be the prop for everybody they start holding themselves up and they start taking their own action they start having like right now in our business is exciting that i'm seeing people having their own keto life parties and i don't have to go do it i was helping a friend do a project the other day and my phone's ringing in my pocket new people are getting signed up like that feels amazing like i'm not out doing it i'm not being that prop for everybody anymore so it's all through activity, action, engagement. It's like if, engagement plants the seeds, engagement waters them, engagement helps them bloom. You guys see the process. It's not engagement plants seeds, gets the transaction, lets them bloom on their own. I am not a green thumb. So for me to do a plant analogy is Nick's probably like engagement for Kelly kills every single flower, but I get it in this business. That engagement helps them bloom and helps them thrive, right? So we want to give, we're getting short on time here. We're going to give call to action and then I'm going to close it out. Put my other hat She's on. put her host hat on. <laughs> so you want to give? All right. So call to action. Everybody needs to schedule three personal meetups to move their five day, 10 day to customer or to move their customer to promoter or to get their promoter taking more action three in-person meetups. These, these three segments have been about in-person. Some of us are so scared crapless to go out and have a coffee meeting and talk about ketones. <clears throat> get them on the calendar ASAP and get back with the coach, the mentor, the person you're working with, your circle of champion, your pro champ, whoever, and let them know, hey, I got three personal meetups. And something cool you can do on a personal meetup, I've had this happen accidentally, I've never done it on purpose, you can take somebody in your community that's having a really good result on ketones and be like, Hey Jess, I'm going to be at Starbucks at one o'clock. Could you stop by about 1:15 and grab a coffee? And I'm going to, I'm going to introduce you to my new person. So then Jess walks in, you're like, Oh, Jess, what are you doing here at Starbucks? Oh, this is my good friend, Kelly. Oh yeah. Tell her about your ketone experience. You can damn the person in person. <clears throat> and then I don't know what that last one says. 
So it says put them on the calendar. So we created a calendar last week because we're scheduling out our in-person stuff. So you can't back hold yourself accountable to that. So you want to put those three personal meetups on the calendar. And then you want to write the outcome when you set the meeting. Have that outcome. Talk to the person you're meeting with about the outcome and do the outcome. Make the outcome happen. So good. I feel like that was good. Were there Thanks, any questions Alexis, for throwing that in. Yeah, three the personal three meetups. Person meetups to take a 10-day to customer or a customer to promote or a promoter to get more engagement. Put them on the calendar and then set your outcome and tell them. So if there's no questions, we want to get you guys on the – Facebook Live tonight with Kelsey Gee. I'm super excited to interview her and hear her whole story. I loved her story at the event. The Facebook Live is www.proveketo, P-R-U-V-K-E-T-O.com. That'll take you right to the Champ Success profile page, and you can watch it there at 9.15 Eastern Standard Time. So thank you, everyone. We'll see you guys tonight.